All right, so um, let me just go for the first slide. I was taking the account that Mark might actually uh, uh, mess up some of the introduction of the CV, so I made my own. <laughs> this puts things in, in the right uh, uh, geographic uh, uh, perspective. Finland is not part of Russia, instead of uh, like somebody thinks. Helsinki is there, Utrecht is there in the Netherlands, and Göttingen is in Germany, and Frankfurt is in the middle of Germany where I'm now located. <clears throat> and like Mark told me, I basically left academia with uh, more or less slamming doors. And uh, that's a very pleasant uh, event and uh, a lot of stress. And I started 2016 the Image Computing Information Technologies. So the name is actually a catch because you spell it, I see it. So if you can't see it, bring it to me and I see it. Um, uh, the motto of system integration is basically uh, retro is in and I don't like to see things being wasted because of getting new stuff just because of that. So uh, as part of that the portfolio, I have a lot of companies that I can source the devices from to upgrade, to uh, update the existing systems, to keep them alive and kicking. And Oroc system, they fit really nicely that, that uh, paradigm. Additionally, there are uh, many vendors from uh, live imaging uh, systems and super resolution also include label free software companies, media 7x, molecular devices, and microvolution, and um, also some lighting system. Okay, so basically, um, what I'm going to tell you now is a story. It's not, uh, not like a scientific report, it's more or less like um, um, playing with Legos, let's put it this way. So um, pushing the resolution limits of laser reconfocal microscope, and yes, it's done with the clarity from Aurox. So the uh, so the test rig what I have working from home due to COVID nineteen gave a lot of uh, quality time with my best buddy, which is the old Axiover two hundred M. That I actually um, I got it in two thousand seven as part of the project at the University of Frankfurt. There's a variety of collection of objectives, and additionally, um, I purchased the um, Oryx uh, Clarity High Speed System, Coolet PE300, and um, also very nicely reduced price for a price for Oryx Flash camera. Additionally, on my PC, I have a PCI Express controller card from Oasis from Objective Imaging and P4 with 400 microns uh, range, which is really really nice. Um, so, uh, samples I usually use uh, from clients. They like to send me all kind of uh, garbage, and sometimes they are really good. At uh, the commercial side, I have this PSF check slide and also the Catacon cells for C. A software, my major um, tools for using the clarity system obviously is the visionary um, and micromanager, also the metamorph and Fiji for image processing, also Image Pro 10 from Media Cybernetics and uh, microvolution I use for deconvolution. So as part of those uh, nicety projects, uh, I get uh, a lot of samples from, from clients. This is from a, a German Cancer Institute. It's a spheroid image with the, with the water immersion objective. And I could actually image the whole spheroid. And it was just about right to fit with the range of 400 microns of the PFOC. Um, I would like to show you a movie, but um, uh, I don't trust this connection, so uh, we can maybe have a brain check on that. So uh, there's a lot of variety of all kinds of samples coming up, and, and I have a lot of uh, fun with those. And uh, as part of this uh, public, public relations stuff um, with, uh, with Oryx, we do all kinds of fun stuff with, uh, with, with Philippa and also Kirti lately. And this is one of them explaining the, the versatility of uh, clarity system imaging across the scales. This is the whole mouse brain slice, it's 250 microns thick, and there's two neurons actually inside, which are labeled with bicytin, which is then uh, labeled with, uh, with Alexa 594. <clears throat> and by doing this one from the left to right, we have the scale wise basically one millimeter, 100 micrometers, 10 micrometers, and 100 nanometers. So, um, this was kind of example. You can do quite a lot of things with uh, with the clarity just by switching the objective. And uh, um, sometimes I got a little bit uh, bored about this uh, poor staining of the customer sample. So I invested to a uh, uh, sale sample from uh, Catacuant, and this is the 4C. 
with with DAPI and um, mitochondrial actin and then mitochondria staining. And what you see on top, um, this is a 63x 1.4 NA oil objective made image. It's a raw data set from Clarity um, with uh, with the tightest conformal section. At the bottom is a deconvolution of 40 iteration with microvolution. A nice thing with the microvolution is that you can actually do it immediately after the acquisition if you use micro uh, micromanager. I have a video on that if somebody wants to see. It's actually online as well. Um, then uh, coincidence come in, comes into play. I was basically visiting a client's lab, and they said, "Well, we here's here's been, uh, well, these are going to go to these uh, objectives are going to dumps." I was looking at wait a minute, uh, are you you're trashing those? And say, "Yeah, we don't need them because we have so plain to new well. Um, you know, tell me where you trust them. I take them." So I this <laughs> out an objective from the bin, and I was very curious to see how it works. And uh, I took these gutta quant uh, slides again and uh, went on a microscope and started making imaging. The same um, paradigm again here is basically uh, uh, Titus confocal section with clarity. Top is the raw data, uh, maximum projection of the uh, 3D stack, and bottom is the deconvoluted with microvolution for the iterations. I just randomly picked up a um, actin, um, sorry, microtubule filament, and I measured the uh, um, full maximum how width uh, value. And I came up with 133 nanometers. So I kind of surprising. And then I was fiddling around with my microscope a little bit. I wondered this on the left side at the top, there's a one funny button that says Optovar. I wonder what was the Optovar again? Uh, oh, yeah, that makes a magnification. So I did the same thing. I took this uh, same objective and just pushed the button and got this suddenly 1.6 times more magnification. So actually, this is 160x if you take it so literally. Um, just taking the same gutta count cell and the same market tuple staining and making the uh, determinant of, of the um, uh, full max how weight value got 109 nanometers. Um, so it, it's kind of uh, exciting stuff. So uh, I don't know um, what actually was going through my head. I was thinking, is this is this actually even even possible? And uh, then I got into discussion with uh, with uh, with Philippa and with Kirti, and they were actually thinking the same way. Uh, it it is well possible that we have not yet seen the end of the performance portfolio of, of the Clarity system of the of the aperture correlation microscopy. Um, in parallel with this one, uh, there's um, application note already available from Oroc website about using the clarity system and the clarity data for super resolution radial fluctuation. So I did the same, uh, took the objective, and this is again, this 160X objective. So I, I wanted to push the limits and um, I made, a, made in, in a, a 3D stack actually. So this is a SERP image, uh, 20 Z slices, 0.2 micron in, uh, in distance and 100 frames for each Z slice. And uh, this is on, on, on three channels. I left the DAPI out because it sucks anyway. Um, and then basically measuring this, uh, taking the same market tubal uh, filament here and I measured this uh, uh, full maximum half weight value and got the 51 nanometers. And uh, this little uh, teddy bear that you can see in, a, in the middle, um, to try to make a little movie out of it. It's just a normal Fiji stuff, nothing really fancy, but it, it just looks so funny, so I thought I'd put it here. Okay, so then the other thing what I had I mentioned to you, I have this PSF check slide from, from Alex or the Exeter, and um, these are the smallest structures, that are the small features, which are apparently 100 nanometer in size, and um, I acquired this one. With 100x and again with the optical, just to see it, there's some lot of aberration. But if I look at these um, orthogonal images of, of one of the beads, I mean they look pretty pretty nice to me. Measuring the uh, uh, full maximum hard width is I got 103 nanometers. So this some of this data is really it's not even 24 hours uh, old, so they might not uh, stand for really scientific scrutiny so you are well very welcome to, to come and uh, give suggestion on that but um basically i use also the pi 
EY calibrate from uh, from Exeter as well to analyze the same image. It seems to be in line what I get with uh, with Fiji as well. Okay, so the end of summary, and this is really a wish from Philippa to keep the talk very short because we are running back in time. Um, as a summary, it's just, it's just a very, very uh, simple um, addition to a existing microscope system. We can get a really fantastic kind of results and uh, without very much um, uh, tricks, you can actually push the resolution to a level where you see a very pleasant and uh, it, pleasant images with the uh, quality that you can easily use your, for your, your, your project. And at some point, of course, it comes to the question if it makes sense to pay 20 times more for something that you can hardly uh, uh, see, just because it has a fancy name. Um, so obviously, this was all now with this 100x lens and, and Optiva, it was basically uh, based on uh, oversampling. On the other end of the, of the, um, of the system is something what Rimas already mentioned this morning is that you could basically uh, skip the idea of using the eyeballs for your for your resolution determination and focus on concentrating the optics and the camera what i would like to do and will do in the next uh, couple of months is to test a camera which has a very very small pixel size instead of this um, this hamamatsu orca which has six and a half microns and uh, there's plenty of things to do and uh, as long as the, i don't get my vaccinations i'm basically having fun with my uh, my friend and uh, my little piglet uh, sitting on the, on, the, on the clarity. And at this point, I just uh, close it up and say thanks for everybody at Oryx and uh, Kirti especially also for valuable comments on uh, not killing myself on, on this uh, super resolution uh, stuff. And Marie Kome from uh, Imagecell for helping with Metamorph and Neil Klixman from all the device and Mark Bruce for providing microvolution licenses. And of course, all the clients for samples, and finally for you for your time. Thank you. Okay, that's that's great, Mika. Um, clearly, you haven't lost um, a bit of the academic in you, and you can't help yourself from carrying on tinkering with the with these systems. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's, I, I consider myself as like a like a hybrid, uh, somehow a link between the hardcore imaging guys and then the biologists. So, Sometimes they need to, you need to take this uh, three meters iron wire and bend the things, and so they understand. Yeah. Okay. I think what perhaps if we can move on, but what I suggest is if you can put some um, links in the chat to. Um, I think you said there are a few videos online which um, people can access. It might be useful to put those as links in the chat so people can see where to get right. Okay. Hold of those. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to move on to our our, our next speaker who's.